All right, guys, it's time to talk about the Mr. G or the Casio G-Shock MRG. Now, this is the premier. This is the top level that you can go when you get into the G-Shock lineup or the world, other than some limited edition models that have just skyrocketed in price. You know, that's excluding those. I'm just talking about brand new retail, high-end construction G-Shocks. And this is honestly the entry level to the lineup. This one retailed for 2,600. There are that purple colored one. Um, I think that one retailed for like 7,400. And I got to see that one in person, it's amazing. So I'm gonna show you the watch, a little show and tell, typical how I do my videos. And then we're gonna talk about the logic potentially behind this. I'm not going to go into like all of its features or the module or anything like that, or at least not in depth, because this watch is beyond that. And quite frankly, you know, uh, a G-Shock Frogman is more capable than this watch when it comes to, um, you know, the, the total package of what it's what it can bring to you in a day-to-day -day life. So this watch is just extreme so let's just get into it let's talk size weight and all that stuff um size on it now i took down a few measurements just so you can grasp what we're really talking about here so i measured from like basically you know this cavity to this cavity which would be the innermost part of the main case which is typically how we measure watches so if you measure from there it's really only 44 mil but if you measure say like the bezel on the outside here which again is maybe just a little bit wider than that part it's 44 and a half mil. Now, if you do measure from like, say from this piece to this piece, excluding, which would, I guess would be the crown guard, excluding the crown, then it gets a little wider at 48.6 millimeter. So although it's a big watch in the world of G-Shocks, it's not that big. Um, and then the lug to lug, as you can see the integrated bracelet thing here, um, the, they drop right down. So the lug to lug would effectively be 53.8 millimeters, so also pretty long, but again, in the world of G-Shock, not a big deal. Now the thickness, it definitely is a thick guy at 16.8 millimeter. And then, although, pri 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 uh, to edit that out, um, proprietary, the lug width here is 26.5 millimeter and it tapers down to 20.8. So, now, it's full titanium. You do have polished bits, you know, titanium raw finishing. These are hand built. And I know that sounds crazy because it is a quartz, you know, tech type watch. But these are handmade in Yamagata, Japan on what they call a G line. Now, I'm going to put a link down in the description to a video I found that talks a little bit about this G line. And that's where like all of the high end G shocks and most of the Casio high-end stuff, like say the Oceanus line, um, that they have some premier watches there. They're all made on this G line. It's actually shaped like a G. So, and these are select people that uh, men and women that assemble these watches, and it starts in the center with the, the raw components, and they work their way out into a G shape. However, it's done. So, it's you know it's kind of quirky that they do it in a G, but it works good for their flow of their assembly on it. And it's a really good video, so definitely check it out. If you're a watch geek or if you're a G-Shock fan, um, it's definitely something cool to check out. So this particular one is the MRG-G1000D-1ADR. Now they also make a, a DC-1ADR, um, which is basically a diamond, black diamond coated. And then there's some other colorways too, um, but this one is kind of the base model one. It has much of the raw titanium and then this is a black coated here. Um, and then all of them will have a pop of like rose gold somewhere. Like this one has it on the, on the ring of that pusher and then on the button on that pusher. So you really only have the three pushers and then this part is void, kind of weird, but that's the way all of them are. So, um, and then signed crown and no matter how you screw this crown down, the MRG is always going to be lined up. So super good attention to detail. Um, function wise, like this guy up here is going to be your light. You can see the LED light up. It's a super, uh, super LED light. Um, and then uh, I forget all the functions, but so if you push this guy down here, you can see that sub dial there jumps down and 
now you're into stopwatch mode, so you're going to be able to start and stop and reset and all that stuff. So if you want to get it going, it just it starts right there, and then you can reset it. Um, and then there's uh, like a countdown timer, I think is what that is, and then there's your alarm function, and then it goes back. So and that's all displayed on that sub dial, in case you didn't notice. So like in regular timekeeping mode there, it's pointing towards the day of the week, which is Wednesday. Uh, this thing does a bunch of other things, um, like right now I'm tracking two different time zones displayed at the same time. So I have my uh, time zone, which I'd be in like the New York City time zone, going on the main three hand. And then in this sub dial over here at the um, 8 o'clock in between the 8 and 7 there, that's displaying uh, like three hours behind time zone. Or no, that's on my same time zone, isn't it? I thought it was on a different time zone. Um, and then you, so then you have up there, you have a 24 hour time zone. I guess maybe that's where it's keeping it. So I don't know. I don't even play around with all the features on it, guys. So this isn't an instructional video. I don't want to get into that. Um, there is a way you can put it into airplane mode if you just hold this button down, though. And it, it does that. And then you can see that sub dial is going to go down to the little airplane. That puts it in airplane mode. So, like if you're in an airplane or some medical campuses and stuff like that, you might have to um, not have the GPS and multiband function going. Because this is GPS timekeeping and it's multiband six. So the accuracy on this thing, they do say plus or minus 15 seconds per month, but it's way better than that. It's, it's always dead on. Like I've never had any deviation on this. So it's pretty nuts. You can see the seconds hand snaps into place, really strong motor on that and it hits all the marks. You know, it's uh, going to always keep your, it's standard G-Shock stuff, guys. It's it pretty much, is just badassery. Um, and then, you know, full titanium clasp and everything, double pushers, and then it has a lock button here. So once you do deploy that, you, you cannot undo it. You have to release that to undo it. So, and then uh, three micro adjusts there. So let me pop this guy on wrist. I can show you that. I know I'm babbling and babbling. Weight on it is 154 grams. So although it's titanium, it's still a big watch. So it's going to have some weight to it. But you can see there on my seven and a quarter. Um, typical big G-Shock stuff. Yes, it does look big. It is big, right? Um, but it weighs light, for especially for its size. So it's going to be super comfortable. And titanium is always super comfortable. Now, because it's so large and thick, you know, it's winter time, you know, it's going to catch on sleeves and coats and stuff like that. Typically, I'm not going to wear this in the winter time. This is going to be the other three seasons that aren't freezing out. So the real topic on this thing, oh, sapphire crystal too, in case you were wondering, which maybe you were. But at this price point, it better, right? So um, I think part of the reason why it took me so long to make this video, I've had this watch for a while now. And I haven't worn it a ton. I wore it plenty, but at this time of year, like I said, with the coats and everything, I just don't wear it as much. So at a retail price of $2,600, I didn't pay that. I think I paid out the door with Michigan sales tax. I think I paid uh, $1,900. So you can find deals on them, but expect to pay $2,000 or more. It's going to be probably the run-of-the-mill price for this guy. Um, so I think there's a ton of watch guys out there that are going to be scratching their head and going, why? Um, and that's a good question. And typically I would answer it with, it's my money and because I can. But for I know for a lot of people, that's probably not good enough. So I have another solution for you. There's another big YouTuber that I watched for a very long time called Nut and Fancy. And he dubbed this, uh, I think he came up with it anyway. It's called The Second Kind of Cool. So, and that's the only way I can really explain this watch to most people. I've struggled to try to explain or justify this purchase, even though I don't ever feel like I really have to do that. But, you know, running a watch channel, I do need to kind of give you some sort of story, right? So I'm going to use Nut and Fancy's slogan here, second kind of cool. And what that means is basically if I say I like it and I can't explain it, then there's there's nothing to explain. Like you you should just be like, okay, I get it. That's awesome that you like it and you found a really cool watch that you like, and move on. There's no there's no um, explanation. You don't need to sit there and try to examine why I like this watch. If you don't, you just accept or don't accept that I like it and it's okay and you move on. 
And I would do the same for you because you might like, um, you know, some weird vintage Rolex or something like that that I can't stand. And you can probably sit there and try to justify it to me just like I could probably sit here and try to justify this to you. But it doesn't work that way, guys, for a lot of watches, for a lot of people. So once it's to the level of what we're going to call second kind of cool, then you just move on. It, it is what it is. I like it. You may not, or maybe you do, and it is what it is. Um, but you can't help but notice that the attention to detail, now other than like some dust or whatever that I got going on here on the outside, but I mean the attention to detail when they're hand making these in that factory in Japan is just phenomenal. I mean these are a top tier watch for a reason. I mean everything is just perfection. This is the best they can do and they charge for it. So, um, but as far as its capabilities, like I said, the Frogman's way more capable. And quite frankly, um, you know, a standard G-Shock, quartz watch, you know, whatever. I mean, even if you wanted to spend $600 or $700, this watch right here is going to be just as accurate. Um, also titanium and tell me the time just as well at a fraction of the price, right? Um, or even if you wanted to stay within the G-Shock line, the MTG series watches are like 90% the way there. I really do believe that. This is probably the best value in the the nicer G-Shock line is the MTG series, the current lineup of MTG. And uh, a fraction of the price. I mean, the retail on this guy was $900. You get the Sapphire Crystal. You get the um, multi-band. Uh, I don't think this one connects Bluetooth. I can't remember. Maybe it does. Uh, yeah, it does. And it connects Bluetooth, which is basically as good or better than the GPS, depending on, you know, how, how you connect it with your phone, because uh, that GPS is going to work worldwide no matter what. But, uh, you know, it's a fraction of the price, and it's it's an excellent watch. Um, they're not in titanium, but, um, you know, for the same reason, second kind of cool here, you know, the $1,600 G-Shock Square titanium. Uh, this is a head scratcher for a ton of people. It's an obvious choice for me. Can I explain it? Not really. Um, can I tell you that I absolutely love it and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get rid of it? Yeah, I can tell you that. So you just have to accept it and move on or um or don't accept it, but either way you're gonna just have to move on. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I know I kind of babbled on there because really I don't know <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you about it. Uh, there is loom. It's not as heavily as applied as you would think or you would like to be, but uh, the light kind of makes up for it. It's super bright LED, and it makes it uh, super easy to read the time. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next vid.